October 17, 1991. Tonight, a primetime investigation. You can find them in kitchens across the country, but some of them do this while you're asleep. Automatic timed coffee makers blamed for devastating fires, injuries, even deaths. The fires uh, completely changed our life, uh, our family's life, and uh, it took our son away. And tonight, Chris Wallace reveals that the manufacturer knew of the danger, but did too little too late. From ABC News, with anchors Diane Sawyer in New York, Sam Donaldson in Washington, Chief Correspondent Chris Wallace, Judd Rose, Jay Shadler, and Sylvia Chase, this is Prime Time. Prime Time, from New York. Diane Sawyer. Good evening. Tonight we begin with a primetime investigation. We're going to tell you about a common kitchen appliance, a coffee maker, that as you'll see has become a kind of time bomb in a lot of American homes. Chief Correspondent Chris Wallace started by talking to some people whose lives went up in smoke and then discovered that the manufacturer, General Electric, not only knew about the danger but basically ignored it until it was too late. My stepdaughter came into the bathroom screaming, the house is on fire, the house is on fire. And it was an inferno. The chandelier in the foyer was cracking and coming down around my ears. For Richard Klein and his family, Christmas Eve 1980 was a nightmare. Their St. Louis home was a show place, once featured in a magazine layout, until a problem with a kitchen appliance turned it to rubble. There we are, out on the lawn. It's Christmas Eve. We don't even have shoes on. And Mr. Klein, what had caused this fire? It was our GE automatic timer coffee pot. The night before, the Kleins had set the timer on a coffee maker like this one to start brewing in the morning. Fire investigators would later say a malfunction in the coffee maker caused it to burst into flames. But General Electric fought that judgment in a bitter six-year legal battle. The Klein's lawyer, Tony Bruning, says GE's attitude was arrogant. They were almost offended by the fact that we would claim that their coffee maker was defective and that, and that it had caused a fire. Wasn't General Electric just acting the way that big corporations do and vigorously contesting a lawsuit? At the time, that's what we thought. But we later learned that they'd had a lot of problems with this particular coffee maker. Over the past 12 years, hundreds of people have had problems with GE coffee makers. Defective machines have burned down houses, caused serious injuries, even killed people. But GE, the company that claims it brings good things to life, for years denied responsibility, contesting claims against its coffee makers with all the resources a big corporation can muster. Experts say the coffee maker has two problems. The thermostat wears out after long use, making this 12-cent fuse the key safety device. The fuse is supposed to act like a circuit breaker, cutting off the machine when it overheats. But over the years, the fuses kept failing, causing coffee makers to burn up, especially the automatic timer models used while no one is watching. But in its court case with the Kleins, GE said none of this. For years, they told us they never had any fires with this particular coffee maker. And the safety director on the last day of trial testified they had 40, that he would acknowledge. In 1985, more than four years after the fire, a jury awarded the Klein $600,000. GE appealed, and a year later, lost again. Did General Electric express any concern for your family or any sense of responsibility for its product? Not once. Not once before the trial, not once during the trial and not since the trial. GE knew they had a problem with their copy maker design as early as 1980. Michael Fitz, a Seattle engineer, is an expert on safety defects and appliances. He's investigated dozens of cases, sometimes siding with GE and sometimes against. The propensity for these coffee makers to fail is uh, severe enough that it will cause a fire that can destroy your house at any time. Which... We asked Fitz to demonstrate what happens to a defective coffee maker. He bypassed the thermostat and fuse to simulate a typical failure. Plug it in and wait. One minute, 
We have smoke starting to appear at the back here. You could just see a whip. Yeah, you could see a little bit. You can, and you can smell hot plastic. Five minutes. The coffee maker starts to smoke, forcing us to back away. The heating element is approaching 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The family's upstairs in bed, probably still asleep, and this is what's happening on their kitchen counter. A lot of consumers will smell the smoke, and they'll come in at this time and they'll unplug it. Nine minutes, the heating plate is starting to melt. What temperature does aluminum start to melt? It will melt at about 1,200. You can see that the hot water generator is starting to sag down. You see how the carafe no longer sits back on there straight. It's now sagging down. We move the coffee pot as a safety concern in case it shatters. 10 minutes. Now we got flames. Captain this is just 10, minutes. just 10 minutes. This coffee maker has caught on fire. So now you're still asleep upstairs. Your kitchen is filling with smoke, with noxious fumes. You've got a coffee maker that's over 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and now you've got a fire. 14 minutes. Whoops. Yeah, that's another sign. A lot of custom, um, people have come in and found the coffee maker in this position. What would have happened in someone's kitchen by this point? Well, by this time, the cabinets would be starting to burn. Uh, paper towels. In a matter of minutes now, we're going to have a conditions that will be rapidly impossible to put out by a homeowner. Fifteen minutes. Now we'll have flames licking across the top of the uh, ceiling. The smoke level in the house by now should be reaching uh, the ceiling areas of uh, perhaps most of the areas in uh, the house in, say, a single-story residence. As you can see, the plastic burns um, as a liquid. I mean, it's like uh, pouring diesel fuel on your countertop and letting it burn. At this point, 16 minutes in, you have a full-scale disaster on your hands, don't you? By this time, we would have a fairly well-involved kitchen fire. Let's put this thing out. This internal GE document shows that as early as 1981, the company estimated there would be 168 claims that year and rated chances no one would be hurt at only 42%. By 1982, the coffee makers had caused so many fires, GE recalled 200,000 of them as potential hazards. The company has received several hundred reports of overheating or fires. Other manufacturers also had problems over the past 10 years recalling more than a million coffee makers because of fire hazards. After GE's recall, the company made improvements in its models, but the fires continued. GE considered adding a second backup fuse, but didn't do it. Finally, in 1984, GE got out of the small appliance business, selling the division to Black & Decker, which added that second fuse. But by then, nine million of the new GE coffee makers were already in people's homes. And GE didn't warn customers of the possible dangers. When they wore out, they figured they were then thrown away, and they were no longer a potential hazard. But in the meantime, with these coffee makers in people's homes, they expected some of them to catch on fire. That's correct. Defective GE coffee makers have been blamed for fires that destroyed the Pascarella's home in Philadelphia in 1985, the Felton's house in Claremont, California the same year, and the Elliott's home in Katy, Texas in 1987. But of all the fires caused by GE coffee makers over the years, perhaps the most tragic happened at this house here in Salt Lake City in 1989. One night in April, John Clark set the timer on his coffee maker and then went to bed. In the house with him at the time were his wife, four young children, and a teenage friend of the family. When I first saw the fire, it was centered right around the coffee maker. It was flames were shooting out into the kitchen. Clark woke up the next morning to a major fire. By the time I, I ran upstairs, there were flames um, chasing up the, up the stairs. Clark rescued one child and jumped out a window, breaking his shoulder. His wife escaped with another child. But others weren't so fortunate. The Clark's four-year-old son and that teenage friend died of smoke inhalation. And six-year-old Lauren Clark was burned over 30% of her body. In the last two years, Lauren's undergone 10 operations and still has to wear a special bodysuit to minimize scarring. Although she faces years of rehabilitation and surgery, she says the worst is behind her. It probably was when I was still in the hospital and 
I had to do like physical therapy like constantly. The fires uh, completely changed our life, uh, our family's life, and uh, it uh, it took our son away. It's of course been a been a terrible tragedy. The Clarks filed a twenty-five million dollar lawsuit against GE and Emerson Electric, the St. Louis company that made the defective fuses. The companies negotiated for a year and a half, then finally settled before trial for an undisclosed amount of money. And as part of the settlement, the Clarks also demanded that GE recall its coffee makers. The company obviously knew that there was a problem and that they knew that that problem could cause fires that could kill people. Um, and what did they do about it? They didn't warn us, that's for sure. Both GE and Emerson Electric refused our request for interviews. But GE gave us this statement read by Senior Vice President Frank Doyle. He began by expressing GE's regret about the Clark fire. Although GE accepted responsibility in that case and settled with the families involved, neither words nor money can ever compensate a family for the death or serious injury of a child. But then GE defended its actions. First of all, stating that only a very small fraction of the nine million coffee makers it sold caused accidents. No electrical product used in the home is totally risk-free, but GE believed the risk of serious injury from this coffee maker was extremely remote. But GE has now acknowledged the coffee makers have been blamed for 15 injuries and some 400 cases of scorching, melting, and fire. And back in 1987, GE successfully sued the fuse manufacturer, Emerson Electric. A GE official testifying his company had been disgusted with the reliability of the fuses as early as 1982. GE's other defense, that it acted as soon as it realized the danger. When GE discovered after the Clark fire that there might be an increased risk in the older coffee makers still in use, it reported that fact to the Consumer Product Safety Commission. GE reported to the government, but not right away. In fact, not until 16 months after the Clark fire. David Schmelzer oversees recalls for the CPSC. GE reported to us in 1990. After hundreds of fires, after several deaths. And when they reported to us, they didn't tell us that the product created a substantial product hazard. They said it did not create a substantial product hazard. A recall of the supposedly new and improved GE coffee makers was finally announced in March 1991, almost two years after the Clark fire. But that was too late to prevent still another tragedy. Five months before the recall, a fire blamed on a GE coffee maker gutted this house in South Carolina. 78-year-old John Oots, a retired pharmacist, was badly burned. He died two weeks later. It could have been avoided if they had done the recall earlier. Wilma Thede is the victim's daughter. It's a, a nightmare that we live every day. We don't, I can't get it out of my mind. The thought that GE knew about it and did nothing. Did nothing. I could still have my dad today if it hadn't happened because of them. It's just, you know, put it out there, let the people buy it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. No big deal. Even now, despite the recall, the danger remains. Consumers have only returned 70,000 coffee makers more than one million thought to still be in use. That's less than 7%. And we had no trouble finding the coffee makers still being sold at secondhand thrift stores. How dangerous do you think it is that there are still hundreds of thousands of these coffee makers out there in people's homes? A and fire will happen. There will be more. I mean, you just say that flat out. Period. There will be more. The Consumer Product Safety Commission is investigating whether General Electric violated the rule which says you have to report product hazards to the federal government promptly. If you have a GE coffee maker that you think might be subject to the recall, or if you have any questions about it, call this toll-free number 1-800-443-9000. If you would like a transcript of Primetime, send $5 to Journal Graphics, 1535 Grand Street, Denver, Colorado, 80203. Primetime is a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source.